Are you ready to rock? Are you ready to count down the top albums by the grunge band Pearl Jam? Let's get ready. Which is your favourite Pearl Jam album? Welcome back to Rocker's Beer Review. Today we're doing another album ranking and this time it's Pearl Jam because this is the month in December we're, we're sort of dedicating our music content on the channel to grunge music and which can be the biggest grunge band of them all, Pearl Jam. Now, you know, we talk about the big four, we talk about Alice in Chains, we talk about Nirvana, we talk about Soundgarden and we talk about Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam, they're the only band out of those top four um, that still have their their original lead vocalist. Um, obviously, the likes of Soundgarden and Nirvana aren't really sort of going anymore. Uh, Alice in Chains do have a different singer, William Duvall, now their new singer. But Pearl Jam have consistently got through all of those sort of years from the early 90s right up until today. They released a new album this year in 2020, still going strong, still producing great albums. So now we've got to the point where there's uh, 11 albums. Yep, there's 11 albums, uh, studio albums that is, uh, by Pearl Jam. I think it's about time to do a ranking. So without further ado, let's start at number 11. Now, Pearl Jam, you know, they're a great artist, but you know, every band has to have a worst album. And the, to me, their worst album is Riot Act. This was their, this is the last place. Um, and like many of their sort of early 2000 albums, just a little bit bland, really. There's no sort of real big standout tracks, you know, and it's as far away as those sort of early original 90s albums as you can get. So in 11th place, Riot Act. In 10th place, no code now this is you know a fair this is what their fourth album um, i saw them live at wembley arena when they played this and they weren't at their best there and i don't think the songs were were that good after those sort of first three albums of the of the 90s their first three albums no code just became a little was a bit too experimental with lots of different styles all over the place but there was no real massive big songs no big anthems that really stood out um, and you know I, I quite like Mankind uh, it's quite interesting because you've got Stone Gossard singing lead vocals um, and also things like um, what other great songs on there um, In My Tree is not a bad song as well but for me No Code is a, is a poor album and it's, it's, not, it's it only gets number 10 in my rankings in number 9 is Pearl Jam often uh, described as the avocado album because it was self-titled album um, and but it's got a big avocado on the front um, I again this is quite it starts off quite rocky and you're thinking we're getting back to their sort of like you know their sort of early form um, but but for me it doesn't really have any sort of real big standout tracks so that's why it, fe it features as number nine in eighth place is Lightning Bolt. Now, this sort of was almost like a continuation of their sort of, yeah, their reinvigoration after Backspacer. Um, it's it's not as good as Backspacer. There's some standout tracks though. Um, Sirens is a great sort of ballad. I really, it's probably my favorite song on the album. Um, and also their first single from the album, the sort of quite punk rocky, uh, Mind Your Manners. It is similar to Backspacer in terms of the style, but it doesn't quite have the songs that that album has. So Lightning Bolt is in number eighth position. In seventh positions is Binaural. Now, this is an album that I think is probably higher up my rankings because it's got a standout song, Nothing But It Seems. It's like one of my favorite Pearl Jam songs. Superb, superb song. Brilliant solos on that song as well. Um, the rest of the album is not bad, but it's it's still quite average in terms of Pearl Jam's um, other output. So I'm giving it seventh. In sixth place is Yield. Now this album came out, I think it was in 98. Um, and you've got songs like Given to Fly, which is a really great song. Wish List, another good song on there. Um, you've got stuff like Do the Evolution, which I think harks back to their sort of Vitalogy sort of uh, uh, sound. Um, and, and really, it's it, it is, it's quite a good good album there, and it gets sixth position in my Pearl Jam rankings. In fifth place is their latest album, Gigatron. I really loved their lead single, The Dance of the Clairvoyance. I thought it was really good. It had a sort of almost like um, 
uh, talking head sort of style. Um, it's a shame that there wasn't more songs on, on the album that were like that, but I think that's a really good song. The other rocking, quite big rocker from the album, um, which was a su Super Blood Wolf Moon, which again, you know, was I think their second single, another great song. There's some good songs on there. I mean, All Right is a little bit better than being All Right, um, but the last sort of few tracks do sort of start to fade into each other. But I think it's a real good return of form, and I'll be interested to see how they take that forward in the next album. So Gigatron is in fifth position. In fourth position is Backspacer. I think this was a real return to form for Pearl Jam. You've got some more great straight ahead rockers on their more immediate songs uh, like Get Some and The Fixer, which I think are brilliant songs. And then you've got things like Among, Among The Wave and the real sort of beautiful ballad Just Breathe. I think this is a real, you know, production wise, it sounds good. You know, Eddie's voice is as, as good as it's ever been. and the, But the songwriting is really up there with their sort of first sort of few albums. So Backspacer for me, hits fourth position. Now we're heading into the top three. And I think that this top three, whereas I've done other ranking um, videos before, and you know, sometimes those sort of top three can be a little controversial, because they're more about what I feel in terms of my ranking of, the, of the, those bands' albums. But for Pearl Jam, I think that my top three are gonna be very, very similar to most other people's top three. So in third position, we have Vitalogy. Now, Vi, Vi, sorry, Vitalogy, what am I talking about? Vitology. Um, it took a while for me to get into this album. After sort of like the very immediate uh, 10 and verses, it's, it goes off in a little bit more of a sort of almost like anti-commercial sort of way. There's some punky sort of songs on there. There's some songs that are not that easy to listen to. But then you've got stuff like Nothing Man and Better Man that are some of their best songs. Um, then you've got those real great rockers on there like Whipping and Corduroy. Really great songs. So Vitalogy. Vi Vitalogy is Vitalogy, it's not Vitalogy, Vitalogy, let's get it right, Vitalogy, Pearl Jam is my third place um, in the Pearl Jam ranking, sorry I'm completely lost my complete train of thought there, so in second position, runner up for the top album by Pearl Jam has to be Versus, some people may put that ahead, but for me Versus is a real great solid uh, follow up to their album 10 um, it's got some real great songs on it I mean you know that you can reel them off Go, Animal, Daughter, they're brilliant songs uh, but then you know my favourites on there are probably songs like um, YMA and Rearview Mirror, they're real great rocking songs and they sort of take, take, the, uh, take their style into a slightly more sort of less commercial just a, a better sort of level of songwriting uh, but probably one of my favorite songs on this album is the is the last song which is the ballad indifference an absolute beautiful song um, and one of my favorites so the best pearl jam album i don't think it's you know i think most people are going to be in agreement with me on this one has to be their first their debut album 10. I mean, it's so, so good. Uh, I mean, for me, I was a bit, you know, I, a bit late in the game when it comes to grunge music. Um, and I sort of, I sort of tired all, all grunge music with the same sort of brush. It was all very sort of like punk rocky, you know, where was the solos? You know, there wasn't big sing-along choruses. But Pearl Jam really, I mean, and this album especially, I mean, I don't think it's ever been better. It's got some, so many classic songs on it. I mean, you've got Black, you've got Jeremy, you've got Alive, you've got Once, you've got Why Go, Even Flow. I mean, there's so many good songs on it. It's a shame that, you know, they they almost, their best stuff came in their debut album. And I don't think they've written a song that as really as good as any of those sort of songs. Um, yes, they've written great songs on, on other albums, but they never hit the highs of, uh, of 10. It's a brilliant album, and I think it's more than worthy to be my number one Pearl Jam album. So, I hope you like that ranking. How? What do you think? Do you agree? Is 10 their best album? Would you put right act right at the end? Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm really interested to know what other people's opinions are. Maybe you want to you do your own top 11 and let me see what they're like, because I'm interested to see. Maybe they're, you know, more people have got into Pearl Jam later, um, and they've discovered their later albums, which for me probably didn't quite hit the mark of those sort of early albums. So, hope you enjoyed it, and until the next one, you know what you've got to do. You've got to keep on rocking.
arcade.